now that we know that we're not capturing anything um, you know below about 5,000 Hertz we can reduce this and um, probably um, you know 10,000 is still conservative um, that gives us a little longer a little better um, Delta Delta F and a um, little longer measurement um, let's just check the response weighting that we have now um, so now um, if we, if we go ahead and try again, um, now we, we definitely are seeing everything that's happening, and we've acquired more than enough time to see the signal of decay to zero. And um, adding some damp shouldn't hurt anything, but since um, the system's already pretty heavily damped, I'm going to, going to decrease the, the window, the strength of the window. Since the modes of this um, hard drive are already fairly heavily damped, I don't need to add much damping to them to have a reasonable measurement time. Okay, so now uh, we should be ready to take a measurement again. So I'll tap the corner here. Um, and again, I'll need to zoom in down here to see what kind of a hammer hit I got. Um, doesn't look too bad. And now you can see that the, the input that I'm putting in is um, is um, only d is down 60 dB or down 40 dB uh, towards the end of the bandwidth. So this should be um, a little more reasonable. Um, so now that I'm happy with the settings that I have, um, I have good coherence throughout the, the bandwidth that I care about. And I think below about 4,000 hertz, I should find some bending modes of this. Um, of this hard drive. So now we'll keep going, I'll keep going and uh, measure at a, a few different points. So I'll start with uh, point number one and um, take a measurement. Um, so far so good, let's see that one didn't register. Okay and so far these look uh, pretty good. And um, I'm probably not gaining too much by taking more averages at this point. So I can save that measurement and go to the next point. Okay, now I'll move it to the next measurement, which is here at this point in the middle. Go ahead and start. And so I'll excite there. Um, Wait a second for the measurements, or for the vibration to die out, excite again. Oops, that one was probably a bit of a double hit. I'll undo that hit. Yep, it was a double hit, so we'll try that again. That was a very soft hit, but it seemed to work. Not a much harder one. And I can, I'll just save that measurement now and keep going. Okay, now I'm on the last point, which is a, which is a bolt right here in the center of the case. This should be one of the easier points to hit. Okay, and I can save that. And now I have a full set of measurements. I'm ready to look at those and to see um, to see what I found. So this these the measurement bar on the side here will give me some options now um, to look at the measurements and see um, how they've come out. Um, so this plot here shows all of the frequency responses and um, thanks to some kind of a bug it's cramming them all up in this small area up here. Now we could move the cursor along and get um, kind of a plot of the deformation shape. And uh, <clears throat> so what this does is it basically shows you the operating shape at any that you would expect to have at any frequency based on the measurements that we've taken. This will be a little funny because we've only in the center we've only measured at a few of the coordinates. So it's um, 
going to have to interpolate for anything that we didn't measure. Since um, this isn't really working, um, fitting into the window here, I'll change the plot so it only shows um, two measurements at a time so we can see them a little better. And um, I'll also change the X scale so that the minimum is about 4,000 hertz. And um, let's see if we can find the first mode of vibration in our measurement. Um, now, there are some different things down here, um, you know, and something going on there, hard to say whether it's a mode of vibration or not. Uh, this looks a little bit like a peak, so we can look at the operating shape here. Um, but here what we seem to be seeing is something where the corner is active. Uh, these two corners are vibrating. The middle, this point here with um, where the bolt is, is vibrating. And these are possibly going opposite. Um, we could try to get a better view here by doing an animation. And um, if I switch this to a 3D view, then you can start to see a little better what's happening. So um, again, doesn't look too much like what you'd expect for a mode, but it does look a bit like a first torsion mode, although perhaps with point 0.8 um, doing something crazy. So um, at this point, we probably want to go back and check the measurement at point 0.8, make sure that looks uh, still looks reasonable. It could be that that bolt is um, connected to something other than the frame, and so we're seeing some local motion of the circuit board. But other than that, this does look a bit like a uh, first torsion mode. Here, um, if we go a little higher in frequency, um, we still see the plate doing about the same shape. Um, so again, this could be some kind of, uh, could be the first torsion mode of the hard drive. Um, and as we go higher in frequency, you see a little more bending um, of the side of the plate. So um, this could be a coupled bending in torsion mode or something else could be happening. Now, if we go out a little higher in frequency, we can see the kind of shapes that, um, that the structure is bending with. This is at um, almost 4,000 hertz. And um, can we tell whether this is right or not? Well, we, I don't have a model or anything for this system, so it's um, difficult to tell. But, um, but um, I will point out um, all, of these, all of these measurements along the edges here are on a pretty stiff, uh, structure. We'd expect um, we'd expect to see some fairly smooth um, bending shapes in the in that direction, and we do there. Um, the other measurements are all questionable, and um, we have some points that we didn't measure that are just sitting still. Once we're we're sure that we have a good set of measurements, um, we can export those into MATLAB for further analysis. Um, here you can see all of the measurements we took um, at all all of those points. Um, those are all the measurements. Notice it automatically comes up with um, a note that tells you what the setting was for the exponential window. And um, we can choose what signals we want to export. Um, typically what we want are the um, frequency response. And then um, the lab handout will have more details, but we'll look at the settings. What we'll want is an ASCII uh, universal file uh, for a PC, and then everything should be um, ready to go. So if we hit export, it should export that. That's everything. Thanks for your attention.